Yes, good evening, and thank you for tuning in to another week with Fathers Who Care. And you know, it is always a pleasure to come back to you, the viewing audience. And before I just acknowledge you all and say how, how I really appreciate you all for all that you've done over these last few weeks, I want to send a special shout out to the West Garfield Park Youth Council, the West Side Youth Council, with the young folks who are continuing to produce this show. We got Kiana, Vernicia, Harry, Derek, Nisha, Nikwa, such and such, such and such, such and such. All of them cats. All, out of, them. Them. <laughs> All of them. All of them young folks, Shania and David and Robert and all of them. And I don't mean to miss their names, but I love these young folks so much. And I thank them for the work that they're doing to allow me an opportunity in their life to kind of expose them to some other ways of... I believe the young folks can be anything they want to be. Absolutely. And I come from an environment where I stand on the shoulders of some folks who really walked me through some things back in my days in Londale. And I'm fortunate to have one of, one of my mentors... Uh, on the show tonight, and, and and as we get ready to talk to, of course, our commissioner, we'll have an opportunity to talk about some of the issues of the day and what can we continue to do to empower our community. But you're watching Fathers Who Care, and as you know, those of you who watch our show weekly, you know, we're committed to empowering the least of them. We really do believe that teamwork can make the dream work. Absolutely. And every man that make a baby ain't a deadbeat That's daddy, correct. right? That's correct. Some of them may be dead broke or may be limited in their resources. So what we try to do as real men on the neighborhood, particularly African-American men in the neighborhood, is to keep that positive image out here of Feel what real gap. men Feel can be. Gap. That's right. Feel we fill it gap. in the gap. That's correct. And so I have no problem with it. I am not confused on what my purpose and my role is in life. And I'm at peace with it, all right? Amen. I'm at peace with what I'm called to do and how I do it. So And, I, and I'm going to continue to do it until he tell me, well. Call on, come on home. Come on home. good and faithful servant. That's well right. done. Come on well home. done, my son. Well done. But until then, I'm going to try to get to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a nice trip for you. You know what I mean? Until then, I'm going to try to do a trip to, uh, to Hawaii and some other nice places. All right. I ain't ready to come home just quite yet, Lord. <laughs> I want to go visit some places. But listen, it's, in all fairness, uh, we really are, are extremely thankful to have another opportunity to be here on this show uh, for another week. And we want to thank... Uh, Want to thank Mike. Want to thank Amari. Want to thank Stephanie. Want to take all of the, thank all of those who have been instrumental and and producing and helped to produce this show. But I would like to take the rest of this time, if you don't mind, to kind of dedicate it to our guest today. I mean, I'm gonna introduce to some, but I'm gonna present to some and introduce to others. Uh, none other than, of course, my friend and my brother, and I think he's a yeoman individual in our community. And I'm talking about he ain't just started this. I'm talking. About this is a guy I think I've known you. I believe. A minimum of 25 years. <laughs> a minimum. A minimum of 25 years. A minimum years. of that, all right? Yeah, whack -a days man. Absolutely, whack -a days A minimum of 25, yeah. if if not longer. <laughs> We've grown some kids up in our time. Yeah, and I know I got a daughter right here who wasn't even born. born right? That's right. So, so I do think it's a minimum of 25, but I believe it's a lot longer than that, all right? But anyway, with that being said, I, I remember going back through all those days when we was in the neighborhoods and doing the work in the fields, and we're still doing it. Absolutely. Still doing it. It's a this. commitment, Walter. You know, because of the kind of passion that we have and the hearts that we have, we are passionate about yes, serving our people. Absolutely. And particularly the young people. Absolutely. And so I, I'm glad to be in the trenches with you. Oh, man. Well, I appreciate it, too, and, I, and I'm really glad to call you one of, one of our finest commissioners in the county and Commissioner, you are a pro tem at that, yes, which we want to, to talk to the folks today and you can kind of educate them on these levels of, of your development and what you're doing. But I really want to literally say that uh, uh, Commissioner Steele is, is truly a, 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 a man's man. He believes in being a mission oriented he, and making change. He's passionate. He's a father. Uh, he's an educator. He's a mentor. Uh, he, he's a legislator. I mean, he's, he's, he's all of that and some, but to know him, you would think, wait, this guy is just so humble, all right? This guy is just so approachable. This guy is just so cool. And don't, I'm just telling you what I know. I ain't got to read this. Don't in, even in, attempt to approach him talking about empowering young folks because it's like, bring them on, all right? Where are these young people you talk? Bring them here, bring them here. I'm talking, I've been knowing this for years that minimum of 25 years. So I have no no doubt in my mind where his heart is at, where his intentions at, and I know that the Lord has placed him in this position to do the work that he do. And but Robert, you know, I'm, I'm really kind of heavy hearted about some stuff, particularly 
the state of of of, of affairs with our young people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hurts my heart to see how our babies are dying. Yes, I, sir. I don't want to particularly devote the whole show to that, but I really wanted you to know as, as one of our legislators that we, we really are crying in the, in the hood well, about what's happening. Walter, I'm, ex I'm excited to, to talk about the good and the positive. Right. Uh, when you share the message about young people, uh, I just attended a, a workshop at Penn Elementary School on this past Tuesday with WGCI. Yeah, 1616 and, 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 yeah, South Avers. Yeah, Be uh, Better Boys Foundation yeah. was there. Commander Johnson from the 11th District was there. And many community and that, organizers. And what's his name was there? The guy. Which, which guy? The, the, uh, the, the guy that uh, on the radio. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Manis, what's his name? Miski or something like that? I can't call well, him. Well, no, anyway, anyway, it was celebrity. One of the DJs, yeah, yeah, one of the DJs, DJs yeah. from WCI hosted the event. Absolutely. And uh, I'll tell you, it, it was a little apathy in, in the room when I walked in. But by the time I walked out and got a chance to speak to the people, uh, we turned that around to a positive uh, uh, about our children and family. One thing we got to know. Parents have to be parents. Wow. You That's can't it. be a male, you That's can't it. be a female with children, and you're not serving as a parent. And so when you become a parent and you serve in the parent's role, parents care. Parents take kids. They don't send kids to places. When you grab a hand of your child and show them where you want them to go rather than point a finger and tell them where you want them to go, that's a difference in how you train your children. And so that's what something that my mom and my dad did to me. They took me to where they wanted me to see. And what they wanted me to see, they were able to tell me that in my face and to my ears. And I want to, I want to come back to that question. I'm saying not the question, but the, the thought of parenting. Mm -hmm. Effective parenting. Mm -hmm. Effective black parenting. Absolutely. All right? And, and unapologetic black. All right? Mm -hmm. And knowing that parent, parenting is a, different, is, is a different flow for everybody. Absolutely. But effective parent is the flow. Keep doing it, right? It, it's, it's a lifetime. Yeah, keep it's a doing lifetime. It. You can't parent your kid for 18 years yeah. and say that I'm no longer your mother or your Absolutely. father. Absolutely. Well, I'm through. I'm through. It's a so, lifetime. Robert, let's do this because I want you to sure. I want you to, to talk back on that parenting in a minute. Okay. But what I want to do, I want to go ahead and kick this show off, okay? You're watching Fathers Who Care, of course, uh, and we have our guest this evening, none other than Commissioner uh, Pro Tem uh, Robert Steele of the 2nd County District. Uh, the number here, the lines, uh, the number here is 312-738-1060. The phone lines are now open, 312-738-1060. And we're going to be talking about how to restore faith and hope back in our communities, economic development, uh, uh, the, this plight that's going on, Robert, that I wanted to talk to you about, and I hope you'll allow me. to talk. You know, I've been hearing all this stuff about property, mm -hmm. uh, delinquent properties, sure. and the possibility of folks possibly losing their property. Yes. So I'm so glad that you gave me an opportunity to bring that conversation up with you tonight, because I think it's something we need to talk about. And then what can people do, or what can people who may be delinquent in their taxes, what can they do to try to keep their property? Sure. And then we want to also talk, if, if the opportunity presents itself, about this land bank, mm -hmm. about securing properties and or lots or whatever through the land bank. And then uh, this youth commission I heard about. I heard about, you know, and I love the youth. You know mm -hmm. that you didn't ran up my alley. I heard about some stuff about the possibility of a creation of a county youth commission. We're council. working on that. We're working on so that right I now. So I knew some stuff that we talked about. And then you had the audacity to get my kids all fired up or got me fired up to tell my kids that you probably have some internship programs or some internship sure. things maybe coming up with Empire. Look how all excited they are in there now. <laughs> Talking about this TV show Empire. But with that being said, Robert, we're going to go, if I can call you Robert. Sure you can. Because uh, it's commish. Commissioner Steele to you all, but uh, I'm going to call him. I'm going to be nice tonight. This is our, our, our Commissioner Robert Steele of the 2nd County District. Listen, uh, Commissioner, can we talk specifically about who you are first? Sure. I know your mom. I know your family. I love them all dearly. I know you. I've been around you. I mean, I, I really have known you for many, 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 many years, all right? When we used to love to go to the Coca-Cola Classics and stuff. That's Back right. in the day. That's right. With, <laughs> All right. With family focus. Yeah, with family focus when you was our board president. Mm -hmm. So back, back, back in the day when we was with, but we were still doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Doing stuff as a team. All right. But anyway, who is Robert though? Who is Robert Steele? And what is Robert Steele's purpose? Well, let me existing? give you a, a real basic uh, description of Robert Steele. Yeah, Robert. I'm, I'm just a, a West Side kid who was born and blessed to have both parents in the household uh, mother and father who raised seven children mm -hmm. uh, as a collective family in the household. Uh, we all went to public high schools, public elementary schools, and, and became who we are today, right. all college graduates. And your mom was the, my the president is, of... My mother is a former commissioner, and then became the first woman president 
of Cook County Board of Commissioners. Oh, okay, okay. And so she was a, a pioneer in her own right of, right. of women's liberation and women's uh, leadership uh, and what she did. And at, still at is. The county, county government <laughs> and, and is doing it across the country. Absolutely. Served in a variety of roles of yeah. leadership with uh, with the White House and with several presidents and first ladies around the country. She and Hillary Clinton were very good friends uh, and still are today. Right. And so, again, Robert is just a simple guy who, who likes to work with passion, mm -hmm. who enjoys the ability to help serve his community, and, 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 and loves to go to church. Yeah. You know, yeah. and has a passion about uh, what he does at his Absolutely. own church and with the friends and associates that he have around his community. Uh, he didn't leave the community once he got uh, his college degree and came back to Chicago and uh, began to do the work uh, again with you and Family Focus and other organizations. I, I serve on, on seven boards. Mount Sinai Hospital and other institutions around our community to make sure that we get the best service. Mm -hmm. And when there are issues around our community, I'm one of those faces and one of those voices who can make a difference yes, in our are. neighborhood. And, and you serve on, you're also a representative on, on the West Side Community Stakeholders as well. That's correct. That's Actively correct. involved with folks in other districts and That's other correct. communities. So, I, and I thank you for that. And, and as you notice, you, when you talked, you didn't say nothing about your profession. Mm -hmm. You talked about your vocation. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you talked about the passion that you have to serve the people. So what I like to do is kind of flip it just a little bit. And I want to kind of, you know, we got some callers coming. I want to see who made this caller, who is this caller. But then I want to keep it on flowing, if you don't mind. I'm with you. We got a caller, caller, you on the air. It'll come in a question. We have uh, County Commissioner Pro Tem. Okay, well, I guess we're having technical difficulties on the line. So we're hoping that this line come through. Call, call, call us back. And, but thank you so much for another opportunity to talk to, to the commissioner. So what is a commissioner? What are the responsibilities of a county commissioner? Well, and what do you all do? The, any county commissioner, there are three basic things that we do. We, we appropriate dollars. Mm -hmm. We are legislators so we can write legislation. And we investigate issues around county government. So if a person calls in and says that this happened to them in county, uh, in the county, county court, county jails, uh, one of our uh, one of our facilities, it's our job to make sure we get down to the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. And so we have the means to do and to respond back to the public about issues that affect them personally or with a family issue. And so we appropriate four point two billion dollars on an annual basis. Four point two billion dollars. That's correct. With That's the budget. That is our budget. Wow. That's correct. And so we do that by collecting tax dollars. Uh, uh, annually from real estate taxes and revenues uh, from taxes and when you purchase, make a purchase mm -hmm. as well. And we put that into our general fund and we divide that through a variety of different departments. Uh, we have 11 uh, separately elected officials uh, with the clerk of the court, the clerk of Cook County, uh, which is David Orr, Dorothy Brown, the clerk of the court, uh, Karen Yarborough, who is our record of deeds, right. and the sheriff's department, Sheriff Dart. So we have 11 uh, separate elected officials. Uh, one I'm going to talk about quite a bit tonight, that's Maria Pappas, okay. who we're dealing with with the tax issue. Okay, and well, let's so do we, this here. You come back with that one. Sure. Because what we're going to do is give you these calls, and then you can kind of incorporate as the folks are calling you to talk to you. And I thank you so much, Commissioner, for again, for, for being on the show and bringing out this valuable information and enlightening and empowering our viewers. Let's do it. Caller, you on the air with our Commissioner, Commissioner uh, Robert Steele. Comment a question, please. Hello, I wanted to give a comment first off to Robert Steele for being one of the magnificent men he is now. Thank and you. And then I wanted to ask the question, why is it important for people to be involved in their community? Well, I, I thank you, Caller, for thank asking you so that much particular for that. question. Thank you. It, it's so important for, we, involvement. for our community to be involved. So you don't ask the questions of what happened. Uh, you're asking questions right now about our president. How did he get elected? Because we sat at home. Wow. We, we didn't go out and vote. Uh, and we were apathetic about what was going to happen and hit that, that uh, Hillary Clinton was just going to get elected because she was a good candidate. For granted. And so we take those kind of things for granted, as you yeah. said, Walter, and not do uh, a, our homework. And we don't go out and be active. we got to be active. And as a caller shared, people like her have to be those leaders and, and for our young ladies to see that, that you have to continue this as a lifetime. You just can't do things one time as an active person and things are going to be well for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Activity goes on for the balance of your life. And so it, whether it's through words or through action, people have to share what they're doing so other people can see it and emulate that and become pe better people themselves. So and thank you, Carla, for asking yeah, that thank question. You, thank you so very much. And as, as the commissioner said, you know, don't complain if you're not involved. All That's right? right. Oh, we're basically saying we don't know what may happen or what or when it may happen, but it can't nothing happen if we work together. Mm -hmm. All right? Unless we say it happened. Call it you on there with the commissioner. What's your comment or question? Hello? Yes. Hi, uh, Reverend Jones and Commissioner Steele. I just first off want to say 
and I'm thankful to have both of you men in my life. You both have served as excellent mentors to me, especially you, Reverend Jones. You helped me out a lot and showed me the ills and the highways and bad ways of life. And to you, Commissioner Steele, I look at you as well as being a powerful mentor in the community, and you serve well in all the work that you do. Thank you. And I want to thank you both for that. And my question to you, Commissioner Steele, how can we bridge the intergenerational gap to promote a safe and drug-free community? I think, I think the West Side Garfield Youth Council is doing that right now. I think by us interacting in events like this, you know, who's handling the screens and, and who's handling the calls today? By us collectively doing these things as a team. Right. You know, you create a team, you know. I, although I'm a little older, I can still partner and listen to the things that you guys need as young people. And so as me becoming a partner of yours, I'm trying to incorporate that into my life passion. Absolutely. And so I think that's how we do this. We have to make sure that we involve our young people in everything we do. Mm -hmm. You can't learn to walk straight unless you've seen somebody walk straight. Right. And so, Absolutely. you know, you want people to, do, to, to have a good lifestyle. You have, they have to model that from somebody else. And so by me being on this show with you today and sharing these things with the young people that's, that's working behind the scenes, I'm modeling to them all the way we, we do things and how we talk, how we communicate, mm -hmm. how we make sure other people know that we're, 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 they're important to us. Absolutely. And so I want our young people to feel important to us. There are too many kids who are at home who go home and never hear I love you. Mm. They, they never get somebody to put an arm around them and say, you're my child and I love right, you. Right. I want to say, my son is 21 years old and just left for college on, on, on Sunday. And I told him I love you. And I can't wait to see you come back home for, for your summer break because we're going to get you a job. Absolutely. We're going to make sure you How work. Is he? He's 21. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but since you brought that up, Robert, uh, let, let, let's, let's go there. Uh, no, no, let's go there. Let's go here. Okay, of, of the Westside Community Stakeholders in collaboration with Yes Chicago, are currently working in collaboration to bring on young folks and to pay them for training, mm -hmm. work development training through the Tapping Leadership Academy. And it would jumpstart your career into today through career readiness training and job placement services. So if you're interested in going into this paid training endeavor, there will be a workshop on Wednesday, March the 29th. Uh, uh, registration and paid training from 4 to 6 and 5 to 7. For additional information, contact Fathers Who Care or contact Yes Chicago. We'll be doing it at the 11th District in collaboration with the CAPS office, but we'll be also presenting it on and on and on so those individuals between the ages of 16 to 24 that live in the Cook County area, you must be under the age of 18. Anybody under the age of 18 must be accompanied by their parent. So what, basically what we're saying, Doc, is that we have opportunities. Opportunities create options. Options create a chance for folks to live out their dreams. Absolutely. So we want to thank those individuals who are working in collaboration to empower young folks. Caller, you on the air, and then we're getting ready to talk about some taxes up in here. Caller. Hello. 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 My question is for Commissioner Steele. Um, I wanted to know what opportunities as a commissioner do you provide for young people? <laughs> Woo, well, thank you for thank answering you that question. Right to the point. Well, well I, the, 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 provide, the, the opportunities I provide are partnerships. Absolutely. I create partnerships. You guys, we're sitting in this room right now here uh, uh, on Wood Street, and just last night, a youth program opened right behind this building at Shy Cats. The building right behind us on. The, the brand new building, that's a right, four-story okay. building, that's just right behind us, just opened, and it has training programs for uh, phlebotomy uh, for young people and for a variety of different career opportunities. Those are my partners now because yeah, I'm going to make sure you our young people in our neighborhood are being referred there for jobs into the future, logistics, engineering, industrial jobs. Right. Uh, Derek, one of your students, just asked me about some engineering work. And so that's a place where he can go and get some training right here locally in the community. And so there's several organizations like that. Cook County just yesterday approved a million dollar grant so we can provide jobs to at least two to three hundred students this summer between the ages of sixteen and twenty-four. That's why we talked to Roberts, to Commissioner Steele. So we're we're, we're <laughs> gonna be letting RFPs yeah. out for organizations like yeah. yours, Walter, to maintain uh, young people in your organization that you'll have the ability to pay their salaries as they work for companies around the community. Okay. And so they'll the young people sixteen to eighteen will make ten bucks an hour and nineteen to twenty four will make twelve bucks an hour. And you will have those funds coming from Cook County to partner with organizations in our neighborhoods around the Chicagoland area and around our suburban area as well. And, and I personally believe uh, that Commissioner is, is, is one that's true to, to his word, has been true to the young people, have been 
continuously advocating on behalf of young people. And I just want you all to know that we can count on steel. So let's do this here. I like that one. That, that was a good one. That was good, that was a good one. I may have to use that. I'll be popping that. I stuff, may have man. to use that one during the campaign. Do it, sometime. man. It's yours. All right, you can you can hide that one, man. You know, I follow the spirit, Robert. Robert well. uh, Commissioner, talk to us about what's going on. I mean, I'm a, I'm a little kind of despondent too behind this information that I'm hearing about. You know, it's a, it's our dream to be on, uh, uh, property owners mm -hmm. that we live. Most of us do to try to secure our dream house or to secure property to take care of our children. Sure. So we want to be in an environment where we can call our own. I understand that there's so many folk now who's at the verge of possibly losing their homes. Can we can we speak on what's happening with well, the taxes or or the delinquent taxes or cuz I'm kept constantly hearing stuff, you know, about folks might be losing their properties and there's a different different sunset clause in there now where folks have to get property or redeem their property in such a time. Sure. And, and I'm not quite sure all of the logistics of it. So well, I'm hoping let, that let you me can give share you a quick synopsis of what Please. what what's happening right now. And I want to thank uh treasurer uh Maria Pappas uh, of uh, Cook County. Okay. Who has put together a list of properties uh, who have delinquent taxes uh, that have to be paid by April the third? So if you know April and, and you're uh, you're aware, and if you're not aware, you can go to any automatic office. You can go to any commissioner's office. They have those lists in their neighborhood offices and is, see if your property, see if their property, your property is on the list. Surely. Look at look at this list. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, you can see if your property is on the list and make sure that you have your pro your taxes paid to date. If you've not done the filings as you do for uh, rebates on your property uh, on an annual basis, you can't count on it being there if you've only done it three or four years ago. You need to do this annually to make sure that you're staying current and compliant with your property. There are many churches on this list. There are many of our neighbors that we know on this list. And we certainly want to make sure that we're helping you to get access to resources that may help you if you're short on paying your taxes. Uh, Minister Willie Wilson just yesterday yeah, announced yeah, yeah. one hundred and fifty thousand dollars he's making available uh, for anybody who has delinquent property taxes. You can call uh, the Willie Wilson Foundation and apply for a small loan that has to be paid back by August the first. Uh, if you want to borrow some money to pay your taxes and maybe become current. So he's going he's he, to provide that. He's conduit. providing $150,000. Right. And there are some other elected officials who are contributing to that fund as well okay. in partnership with him to make that number a little higher so we can help uh, provide more resources so, for more go families. Back, but go back, Robert. Now, Woody Wilson is putting up $150,000 in loans. That's correct. To assist folks so, in, in, in paying for the, paying their taxes. That's correct. So now, the Woody Wilson Foundation and and another group that's partnering with him uh, is making sure that uh, we're just not leaving people hanging out there in, in the dusk and they can't afford to do it themselves. That's probably why. Many of these people are seniors. Right. Most of them are seniors right. and people who have transferred from a senior to one of their kids and the kids did not do the filing right. on the senior tax freeze. Right. And so now those taxes are maybe a little higher. And so uh, if you need some assistance, please call my office. And what's the number? My number is 773-722-0140. Right. 773-722-0140. And we can point you in the right direction to get some assistance to make sure that you are, are getting your taxes paid. And so several elected officials are going to make rounds this weekend to several churches in our neighborhoods and our communities. We're going to be on radio shows. We're doing TV shows all weekend long to make sure that we are helping you to know if you're on the list. We have lists in all these community organizations' offices. So, so Commissioner... Uh, we think this is a, a, a gallant effort on behalf of the commissioner's office of the county to make sure that we try to save folks' homes and save folks' dignity, right? That's correct. Uh, uh, but what can we do as advocates in the community, as, as agents of social uh, social change, what can we do to help this endeavor that you all So, So, Walter, be aware of this. The, when you talk about saving homes, there are a group of vultures out there that are called tax buyers. And they go by your property taxes, so you have to pay and reimburse them at a higher rate. And so they'll charge you 18%. 18% in interest is what you have to pay to get that property back. So they be waiting. They're waiting for you. Waiting for the tax lady. So they may buy your taxes for $200. Right. But by the time you have to redeem that property back from that tax buyer, it may be $700. For you to get your property back, so if you don't get it, and likewise, right two away, to, two to seven. That's correct. Thousand. And so it could be depending depending on the amount of taxes you owe. It's always eighteen percent plus fees that you have to do to re uh, to 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 re, uh, reclaim. And so there was a there was a state law that was passed last year that caused this to happen. Rather than having a year to redeem your taxes, now you only have six months. Man, that's ooh ooh. 
That was a new law that was done okay. in, in Springfield. As opposed to a year and it, to redeem. Year, Magic correct. only got six months. You only have six months. Can, can we get a call? Because I don't know. They might be calling about that. And if not, then you take it and keep rolling. Caller, you on there with Commissioner Robert Steer, Pro Tem. Your comment or question, yes. please. Yes. Great show. Commissioner. Yes, sir. Why is, it, why is it that Chicago has the highest taxes everywhere? I live on the south of Chicago, and I go to Indiana to get my gas, my food, and everything else. Because I can afford it. I can afford it here in Chicago. So your question, your question is why Chicago had the highest taxes. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, let well, him answer it. You, you have to understand that our taxes are based upon municipalities who are asking us for more money for their resources. Cook County itself, we have not raised the taxes on our real estate properties in over 20 years. Sales tax is what he's talking about. Right. The sales tax in Cook County is 10.25%. 10.25%. 10.25%. But because of... That's on each dollar. On every, on every purchase of a dollar. Right. But because the CPS, the Chicago Public School System, has increased their fees and they're asking for money, the uh, I'm sorry to say this, but Mayor Rahm Emanuel has increased fees and he's asking for more resources for the city of Chicago. So we have to collect it in Cook County and turn it over to that municipality. So it's it's, it's those kind of things that are causing your taxes to happen. You're going to get news uh, in, in another uh, month. We're going to reduce some of the vapor taxes that you have to pay on gas. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to reduce that from Cook County standpoint to make that, that, that gas cost go down just a little bit around Cook County. And so we're trying to reduce some of those fees uh, in Cook County to make sure that our residents don't have to run to another city, another county Which to get doing. a cheaper cost. Which is what they're doing. Yeah, they're doing that. You know, even a, you know, a bottle of water. Yeah. you got to pay extra and taxes on tax. a bottle of water, soda tax, and those kind of things. And I have new, to have bag tax. Yeah, they got I, that. I, That's I, the well, city. I have to, yeah, it's not, not Cook County. Cook County's not doing it. I had to pay seven cents for a bag today. You did. I did. So, Rob, uh, Commissioner, here, here, here we are. Now, I know I, I really want to hit this thing because I think it's, it's extremely important. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk briefly because we only got a couple more minutes. What's going on with Chicago State? Well, Chicago State has some issues going on. You know, for the past five to seven years, Chicago State has had some financial issues. Uh, they have about 3,500 students in a, in a campus body that should have 10,000 students. Okay. And we're trying to do a better job of monitoring what's happening there. They just got appointed some new board members at Chicago State University. They have an interim pres president over there, Cecil Lucy, who's been doing a fabulous job of retooling that school. But we need more interest from the governor's office to put money into that institution. Okay. We really need that. On Monday, they're going to take a vote whether to maintain and retain the current president there, which we should for right now. That's Lucy. That's, that's Cecil Lucy. We should maintain And possibly him. Marshall Hatch. And, and Marshall Hatch should continue to be the chair of that board. Okay. Uh, but there is some discrepancy about who should be the board chair there. And we know that some outsiders have been uh, put on the board by Governor Rahner to potentially take over the seat for Marshall Hatch. And that vote's going to happen on Monday. But hopefully we're going to ask all those board members to reconsider right. what they're doing. Make sure a historical black college is out operated by those who are from that neighborhood. And, and, and got a passion for, for making sure that we maintain That's correct. Uh, the, 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 the historical black college in the Midwest. That is correct. All right. So listen, you're talking to, of course, our commissioner. His number, his office number is 773-722-0140. And he wants you, most importantly, as we close out on this show, to get in touch with his office if you believe or if you are on the tax sale delinquency list. And then also, give me a quick one on that, Robert. Yeah, there, to us there's a health program and a, a free health, uh, a community health conversation and health affairs uh, event that's happening with Next Level Health at the Chicago Urban League this coming Saturday uh, from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. We'd love for you to stop by. What is it again? Th that's this coming Saturday, uh, the 25th of September of, uh, of March, uh, at uh, from 4 p.m. from uh, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, 4100 South on Michigan Avenue. Please stop by and be a part of this event. Free conversation for you to talk about health issues. They can provide you free health screening, and you'll have a great time being with us on Saturday. Listen, we have to tell you that it's time to go. God bless you. Good night. Keep the faith, Robert. Thank you so much, as always. You're a man, man, and you're the commissioner's commissioner. Look, keep doing the good work. Thank you all. Thank you all for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Our guest next week will be Layla of the Yes Chicago. We'll be talking about how to empower these young folks through training and employment. God bless you. God keep you. Good night, and keep the faith. And we'll see you on the other side.